To make the original recipe, I need fresh, live frogs. But these days, even the French import their frogs' legs frozen from Asia. So, like an intrepid Tudor explorer, I've come to the new world on the trail of my dish. I had to come to a culture that respected frogs in cooking like no other, a culture that actually considered the frog to be one of the most regal foods of all, the Chinese community. New York has literally one of the biggest Chinatowns in the world. So I'm off to find me some live frogs. I'm meeting up with local restaurateur, Ed Schoenfeld, who I'm hoping can help me on my quest. This is probably, the, to my mind, not only for Asian markets, but the best all-round market in the city. And live frogs, how easy is it going to be to get hold of some? Well, you know, I've done a little scouting, so we'll find some live frogs on this block. It's a nice day today, and, and I think some of the frogs are sunning themselves on the west side of Mott Street. How many are going to get? Maybe uh, two, three? Oh, he's strong. Live frogs. Now what I've got to do is make me a Tudor blancmange. Dealing with live frogs is by no means easy, but thankfully Ed's taking me to meet local chef Joe Eng, who knows exactly how to get the best out of this delicate meat. So they're still alive? Yeah, look at that. Joe is going to humanely dispatch my frogs with one swift cut. The frogs are then gutted and skinned. The Chinese don't just eat the legs, they use the whole frog. And that part in the back has got to be very soft and young. Yeah, that, this is yeah. the Chinese favourite part. This is the special stuff. So, time to get cracking on my Tudor Blancmange recipe. First up, we simmer the whole frogs in water until tender. Right. The next stage is now taking the meat off the bone. Uh, and then we're going to mix the frog meat with almonds and pound and pound and pound. The mixture is blended into a froggy almond smoothie. But then, unbelievably, we have to strain out most of the delicious meat to create a creamy, frog-flavoured blancmange. A little more heating thickens the dish. It's still continuing to set. I finished the recipe with two of the most highly prized imports of the Tudor age, pomegranate and sugar. Sugar was big. Tudor times, it was a real sign of wealth. So the more sugar you have, the better. So sugar went on everything. And if you could be in big lumps, it was even better still, because it showed you were really wealthy. Was it a culinary epiphany? Uh, I certainly wouldn't say that this is a life-defining moment in my career as a chef. It didn't really taste a lot of almond flavor at all. No, the frog comes through. I can sort of see the point of them doing it, but it, it's an awful waste of some fantastic frog meat.